Okay, guys, we are back. So let's keep on exploring. Let's check out this house here. Residence 2. Okay. Um, Cratch. Ah, man, I'm tired. <coughs> Where's Todd, anyway? I thought he was going to be here when I got back. He's out playing with Locomo right now. And probably getting covered in mud. <laughs> and then anything different? Just look at you. You're covered in mud. Go on and clean yourself up before dinner. Okay. Ah, so that's one of the neighbors. So wait, if that one lives there, then what's... Does he live in here? He lives in Jackass's repair shop? <laughs> Jeez. I still believe this guy is named Jackass. Like, poor guy. Like, what kind of parent would have to be like, Ah, uh, we have a son. Like, like at the like at the maternity ward. He's like, our son is born. What shall we name him? Why would Henry or Frank? No, I'm going to name him Jackass. That's the perfect name. Because he's going to be a jackass when he grows up. <laughs> Uh, out on a date at this hour. Cackle. That's why I like to see uh, youngsters like you. Make sure you treat her right, you hear? Th that's really not what's going on here. You can really tell he's one of Gwyn's friends. <laughs> that's how you youngsters are meant to be. Make sure you treat her right, you hear? Alright, so he's got all this stuff. Right, let's go. <coughs> I'm not gonna lie, like, uh, the trade shop is a great idea, but... How in the hell are you going to accumulate enough of items to trade for other items, you know? Like, because as you guys can tell, like, throughout this entire game, money is scarce. Like, you have to, like, mine for that shit. And, like, I don't know. It's just so weird that, like, <clears throat> the money is very, like, oh. Wow, this city's got a nice feel at night. Yeah, it's really pretty. There's the Reaper in the corner over there. All right. See, we went up the escalator like a normal person. <laughs> All right. So I guess that means we can explore down here, or this area. But let's check on the left here. One of the kids over. Oh, I think I sent someone nearby. Really? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I can too. I think it's the kid we're looking for. Probably. Let's take a look. Oh, okay. Well, I was just guessing, but okay, cool. Um, where is the kid? At the door. Door's locked. Uh, okay, no, he's not here. Wait, what the- what? He's in a box? This one box is pretty suspicious. No kidding, and I can send someone inside. The boy we're looking for is named Todd, right? Todd, if you're in there, let us know. You've been surrounded. There's nowhere to run. What the- <laughs> Fee. <laughs> huh? Who are you guys? Got him. Welcome on sent us to come and look for you. I can't believe he seriously got adults to help him. That's cheating. Well, to be fair, it was our suggestion. He was pretty worried about you though, since it's getting so late. What were you what were you going to do if you ever if he never found you? You didn't seem to be you didn't seem to want to be found, so I doubt you would have come out on your own. Well, <laughs> you might want to set up a time limit next time you do this. Bah, fine, fine, I'll go home. I'm amazed you've managed to find me in that box, though. We can't all be masters of stealth. Hiding in a box is a bit cliche, too. People do it all the time on sneaking missions. Gee, I wonder what game she's referencing from. <laughs> wow, you're so cool. I want to go on a sneaking mission, too. Can you not give innocent little children strange ideas? <laughs> Uh, Metal Gear Solid. <coughs> Thank you so much for helping me find Toddy. What a relief. Bah, I found a great hiding spot too. And stop calling me Toddy already. Aw, why? You're always going to be Toddy to me. At least nobody ended up lost or hurt. It's really late now though, so Bo, you need to head on along home, alright? What? We've barely gotten started. Now look at what needs to hide. What? I think we need to stop for tonight and go home. You're going home. We just have to do what winners say, right? Ah, uh, fine. I'm going. I'm going. Good boy. <laughs> Take care of both of you. Later. Wait for me, Toddy. Thank you so much for finding him for me. They're not much, but you can have these pretty stones as a thank you. Ooh, thanks. Thanks. Come on, what's taking so long? Hurry up or I'm going to leave you behind. I'm coming. 
<laughs> well, that takes care of that. I never would have expected you to be so good with kids. I suppose. You find kids that age on the battlefield, too. That's... Hmm? Oh, it's nothing. Anyway, we ended up getting sidetracked, but I think it's about time we headed to the bar to meet Captain Claire. Fine by me. Alright, so there we go. We finished that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Let me check up here for a second. If you, if you, he, that kid better go back in this damn house. No more hide and seek, goddammit. Alright, oh, here, ha <laughs> ha, yes, discipline the brat. Alright, hey, Todd, where you been? It's a secret. Nah, ha <laughs> ha, a secret, huh? Well, aren't you a mystery man? This little brat, seriously. <laughs> okay, anyway, so here, well, now that they're both back, I think it's about time I started working on dinner. They must be starving. Yeah, no kidding. I could actually go for some pizza right now. <laughs> Ugh, sorry, I'm not going to talk about food because then I'll get you guys hungry. <laughs> <coughs> Alright, so now we can finally move on. Let's go. Go back up here. We'll just explore these last, what, two? Yeah, this one house and then we'll go into the bar. Alright, here we go. Ruler Residence. What the heck? What the hell? What happened? Uh, let's talk to her first. I was in the middle of making a stew when the pen just exploded. What could possibly have caused that to happen? I have the faintest idea. What? <laughs> um, well, I guess you're just like your daughter, Mint. Alright, here's Johan cleaning up the mess. My wife marches to the beat of her own drum. I beg and plead with her not to add her personal touches to her cooking, but will she listen? <sighs> No, no, she won't. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like work is less exhausting than being at home. I feel for you. <laughs> Look at this beer bottle, a mug. I'm guessing this is the pot right here. <laughs> uh, well, we now know where Mint gets it from. But they're enthusiastic, so that kind of evens it out. Kind of. Alright. This is where Claire said to meet her, right? Yeah, this looks like the place. All right, let's go. Well, looks like this is the place. Are we done looking around? Hmm, after we meet with the captain, we probably won't have any more time to look around tonight. Yeah, let's enter the bar. <coughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Just opens the door, doesn't go inside. Ah, yes. Plays that nice music. Oh. Okay. Alright, now to find Captain Claire. Oh, wow. Well, then. She's dressed pretty nicely. The one time I wish I actually had the DLC to make Reen look a little cooler, you know? In that snazzy uh, casual wear, but it's okay. Like I said, it's it's fine. I, I guess it makes sense that she wouldn't come here in uniform. The chimes of an older woman, eh? I think I'll manage. <laughs> sure. Uh, I got a lot accomplished today. I'd say I'd run myself a drink in a nice place like this. And the guy over there, grand. Welcome to F. I hope you enjoy your visit. <coughs> Here's the bartender. Oh, are you together? Welcome to F. Would you like something to eat? And then this guy over here. All right, now to get. <coughs> excuse me. Now, all right, now to get started on those on their reports. I swear, do Harves and Gregor do anything other than play around? They have no aspirations higher than improving their remote-controlled car. <laughs> Alright, so... That is it. Alright, let's go see what the lovely Claire has to say for us. Or, talk to us about. Sorry I kept you waiting. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I kind of ran into her on the way here and told her she could come along. That's not a problem, is it? Not at all. 
I assume you've been surveying the town while acting as Rain's bodyguard. Sounds like you've done your homework. The intelligence division has told me a little. Anyway, I think we might attract a little too much attention if we stay at the counter. What do you say we get a table for three? All right. It's good to see you both. I think this may be the first time we've been able to have a proper conversation. You may be right. You know what? <coughs> I just realized, what would have happened if we didn't find Fee? Would it have just been a one-on-one -on -one conversation? I'm actually curious. Nah, it's cool. Alright. I was hoping I'd get the chance to sit down and talk with you too, actually. Oh? Sure you don't want me to go? Oh, that's not what I mean. I have, <clears throat> I have a lot of questions, like about why Milium transferred into our class, for example. But there's one really fundamental question that would go a long way toward answering a lot of the others. What exactly is it that you and Chancellor Osborne are trying to accomplish? Oh, the music changed. <laughs> <coughs> Let's look at that standoff with the Provincial Army earlier this evening. It's hard for me to feel much sympathy for them after they drove armored cars right into the middle of the city. Yeah, I agree. But maintaining order in the provinces is generally accepted to be the duty of the provincial armies. Maybe it's just me, but it seemed an awful lot like you were just trying to provoke them by belittling their authority. It did look like your people were picking a fight. Not really. It didn't really seem that way. Because they were on... It looked like they were on official business, but, you know, the provincial, ar the provincial army just keeps getting in their way, so... I don't know. Let's just keep going. <coughs> Viewed without the proper context, I can see how it might look like that. But right now, the factional conflict in the Empire is nearly at its breaking point. Crossbow is pu buzzing with talk of independence, and Calvert is still weathering its immigration disputes. In such volatile times, there's a very real need to create a far more expansive network to help maintain public order. The only organizations that are up to the challenge are the RMP and the Intelligence Division. That may be the case. Still, your boss is the one making those conflicts worse. That's true. I talked to, I talked with this in the comment section with uh, Red Guy and High Dragon. And he's kind of the one who's kind of like pushing his authority around, so... Yeah. <coughs> I can't deny that. But at the very least, the Chancellor is acting with a sense of integrity. He hasn't stooped so low as to give, give aid to a terrorist, unlike some others I could name. True. I want you to at least understand that. Wait, so... Wow, she really said it. So the Nello faction's been the one backing the terrorists, huh? Ah, whoa! So that's... Well, I mean, we had a suspicion since Laura's um, field study, but... Well, there you go. That kind of proves it, I guess. So... Cayenne really is an asshole. A spicy asshole. <laughs> Ew, that came out wrong. Sorry. <coughs> Alright, so anyway. I'm afraid there's no longer any doubting it. <coughs> Excuse me. We've all but confirmed the involvement of Duke Cayenne, the most prominent representative of the four great houses. Ah, okay, so I just said that, and he really is an asshole. There we go. The three airships that the Imperial Liberation Front, or the, uh, sorry, <coughs> the ILF, has been using, have been tracked back to Ordis as well. I wonder how they got their hands on those. And I heard the Duke is just a gaudy old man, but... Jesus' brother came to pick him up in Lagram, didn't he? That's what Tovo told us. And now Rufus just so happens to pop up on another of his secret trips. Captain Claire, what's going on in Ruer? And how are Elisa's family and the Rainford Company involved? I guess it's time to get to the matter I called you here for in the first place. The, R the RMP are currently weighing the possibility of a forced inspection of Rainford's first factory. <coughs> Sounds serious. The first factory belongs to one of Rainford's major divisions, right? Correct. It's one, of, it's one of the main divisions that handles the bulk of the company's iron and steel processing, among other things. They are also currently under suspicion of something I'm not at liberty to discuss with you right now. The two of you are aware that, the <coughs> that project management at Rainford is split up across several major branches, right? It is. And on top of that, she's got her hands in the development of our Arcus units, too. It's way too much work for one person. How many projects does Mother have under her wing right now? Well, I'm afraid I can't give a simple answer to that. 
But su suffice to say, the chairman only knows about a small number of the projects in development by the Rainford groups. Lately, the directors have... Oh. Come to think of it, I overheard Elisa and Sharon talking about something like that. For years now, the Rainford, Rainford has been the Empire's heavyweight when it comes to heavy industry and manufacturing. <coughs> the company is split into different divisions that handle things like steel production, railways, weaponry, and tools. The problem is that those divisions have simply become too large. Large enough to have their own internal allegiances, some to the nobles, with others supporting the performance faction. Uh, are you serious? So even companies are taking sides. I'm sure Arena Rainford is aware of this to at least some extent, as a company's chairman. But the self-supporting accounting system she introduced has a side effect of granting each division a long leash. Because of that, I doubt even she has a full grasp of the situation. So the first factor you guys have your sights set on for that inspection is aligned with the noble faction, I assume. You assume correctly, and the provincial army is doing everything it can to stop us from carrying out that investigation. Ah, it all makes sense now. That's what led to this evening's quarrel. I imagine Chairman Arena is currently doing her utmost to rein in all the divisions and get them back in line. The thing is, when she seized control of the company five years ago, she had to rely on support from both sides. Being indebted to them like that, <coughs> I have my doubt she'll be able to target the underlying problem. Man, that is kind of tough. It's sounding shadier by the minute. You can say that again. The situation seems even more dire than I thought. And while all this is going on, the, fa the factional conflict keeps burning hot across the rest of the Empire. I told you as much as I can right now. Tensions are mounting all over the country, but Ruhr has an extra fuse of its own. Try to get an understanding of the crisis unfolding here, then do your best to stay out of it. Whatever other lessons Class 7 takes away from this field study, I hope that ends up on the list. <laughs> I wish you the best with the remainder of your field study. And there she goes. <laughs> Please have the bill sent to the RMP branch office in Ruhr Station. Certainly. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Nice dress. <laughs> Alright, so we're left to our thoughts. And back to the music. Wait, the bill! It looks like she just picked up our tab. She gave us some good intel too. For free even. Uh, I can't just go running after her now. It looks like we owe her one. So, you like the mature type, huh? She's sort of like Sarah, except responsible and composed. You can say that again. Oh. <laughs> oh. Must be yours. Hello, Reen Shorts would speak. Reen, what are you doing? Oh, it's just you, Elisa. What do you mean it's just you? Is it true some girl invited you out for a night on the town? Whoa, hold on, a late night date? I thought you only had eyes for me, Reen. Wait, what? <laughs> That's... What? <laughs> oh no, 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 damn it, Dorothy's corrupting Crow now. Damn it, Dorothy, no more Yaoi comics. Alright. <coughs> anyway, good job, kiddo, you better spill out the details later. He'll do no such thing. Now, now, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Fee was with him too. <sighs> Still, it was rash of you to go out on your own without at least consulting us. I'd probably just hang up. <laughs> Ready to head back? Yeah, I think that'd be for the best. <laughs> Poor Reen. He has so many women liking him, but he's just... Well, he's not clueless. I'm... All right, 20 points? Okay. So I was trying to say, at least he's not clueless like other certain male protagonists from certain anime shows that I, that I watched and really, really hated after finishing them. I won't say, but you can probably guess who I'm talking about. For some and uh, anyway, let, so here we go. We got 20 points, so we have 377. We are rank A2, so wow, we are close. Keep up the good work. All right, anything else or nope? Okay. <coughs> Meanwhile, north of Ruhr City. Okay. Whew. Okay. Up, oh, ominous music. You know what that means. So, is it the provincial army or is it the terrorist? Oh, okay, I was right, the terrorist. Hey, we smashed those boxes earlier. The time has come. Oh god. First I know, then Crossbell. Now Ruru shall be the third to witness our conviction. 
Yes, Lord Vader. <laughs> As you wish. We'll hit him so hard, they'll be picking up the pieces for weeks. Uh huh. You heard the boss, man. Tomorrow's a red letter day for us. A real do or die moment in every sense of the word. No, no, this isn't going to be like the Red Wedding from Game of Thrones, is it? I mean, I don't really watch the show, but anyway. All our preparations will be rewarded soon when we sweep in and take the Chancellor's head. Uh huh. Keep your eyes on the prize and give it all you've got! Yeah! That's it? Okay then. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. <laughs> Loading. All right, next day. I'm guessing they drilled Reen on all the juicy details with Captain Claire. <laughs> of course, Alyssa's mad. <laughs> <coughs> so tired. The air's here so fresh, especially for a city with this many factories. It must be because we're up in the mountains. I'll say, compared to the capital, the air quality is pristine. Heh, <laughs> well, the capital does have a few hundred thousand more people living there. Gee... <laughs> Claire. Uh, sure is a nice day today, isn't it, Lisa? <laughs> not as nice as last night, it must have been. Uh, I told you, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll bet you are. I cannot believe you. After all those things you said to me last night, you go rushing out to meet another girl. The skies might be clear, but I'm sensing a stormy forecast today. Well, all things considered, <coughs> even when we assume Captain Claire is trustworthy, I'm not sure how wise it was to go out on your own. I know, I know. In hindsight, I regret keeping it to myself. Still, it's pretty bold of Captain Claire to show up alone to meet Reen. You can dress down. I wouldn't have thought she'd go out alone with a provincial army patrol, or with the provincial army on patrol. I'm guessing she's more than strong enough to handle herself. Not sure what her weapon of choice is, though. I don't know, guys. Guys, this is like a serious. This is like a, a normal trope in anything. If she is by herself and she has a nickname already, she's probably powerful. She, I mean, they call her the icy main throughout this game, so she's probably she could probably hold her own. <laughs> all right. Anyway, I wish I could have seen her all dolled up, though. I bet she was a real knockout. Come on, that would put a spring in any man's step. I don't blame you for sneaking out alone. Gee. <laughs> no, it's not like I knew she was going to show wearing a cocktail dress. I swear. You seemed pretty taken by her when she showed up yesterday, though. And your eyes were glued to her right up until she left the scene. Oh, really? So while we were enjoying a quiet evening, you were out carousing with a beautiful woman, were you? You lucky son of a... I mean, for shame, Rain. We're here representing the Academy on a field study. I swear, you guys are just making things up at this point. But thanks to the information got from her, we have a pretty good idea of what's going on here in Ruer. And now that we know, we should be able to do something about it. What do you think, Elisa? Yeah, I'm in. So in short, the first factory did something to catch the eye of the RMP, prompting an inspection. And all the while, the provincial army's been here blatantly trying to prevent them from doing that. Let's not forget that the first factory is run by none other than the noble faction. I know that the divisional directors have been operating without much in the way of over executive oversight for a few years now, but Mother always allowed it. She thought that encouraging competition among the division would yield more innovations. I never thought that lead to something like this. Seems like the lesser of two evils. By the way, hearing about the first factory made me curious. Do the other divisions have their own political allegiances? Well, to give you a basic idea... Oh, here we go. We're going to learn some stuff. This is a bit oversimplified, of course. Divisions are made up of many people, and they all have their own opinions. Alright, so let's take a look first. So the first factory, Iron Steel, Large Machinery, is Noble Faction. The second factory, Guns, Tanks, and General Armaments, the Reformist Faction. <coughs> orbital Trains and Orbital Airships are Neutral. And Fourth Development Division is Orbital Communications and Battle Ornaments, so that's the Chairman controlled. 
Okay, so if I got this right, so Noble Faction, like Yusis' family, will be the first factory. Reformist would be like with Machius' dad's side. Neutral is just for everyone, all sides, I believe. And the fourth division would be uh, Elisa's mother. So she's in full control of that. Gotcha. Okay, pretty simplified, like you said. All right, but the position of each division's directors are clear as day, though. The first and second factions in particular have had a pretty fierce rivalry going between them for years. But even still, I wouldn't have expected the first factory to do something flagrant enough to prompt a military inspection. Neither would I. Okay. All right, we're going to do whatever it takes to get to the bottom of this. And when we tie this up all nice and neat for her, even my mother will have to admit she's grateful to us. Sounds like a plan. That's the spirit. Offhand, I'd say this falls under the scope of our field study, too. Thanks, everyone. Sounds like we're in for a ride. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at the field study task Sharon gave us for today. Alright, so let's see what they are. Okay, September. Day two. Assigned task. Alright, so three. Crying over lost milk. <coughs> milk is missing. Could you please help us find our beloved kitty? Any would-be heroes which should come talk to me at my house next to dining bar F. Vanilla. Okay. Shots fired. Those of us at Rainford Second Factory have developed a new type of orbital gun and we like to have it tested. Speak with me in RF Arms if you fancy giving it a shot. Okay, from Sandy. And Nordia Highway Monster. A ferocious monster has appeared on the Nordia Highway. The Nordia Provincial Army hereby direct requests its extermination. It's a Hydra. Okay. And once it's done, talk to the idiot asshole soldiers in front of the mansion. Gotcha. Okay. Pretty simple. Yeah, I think we can handle these. It's still 8 a.m., so we have plenty of time to work our way through the list. And while we're doing that, we can ask the people we meet about how things stand between Rainford's divisions. Look alive, everyone. It's time to get to work. Right. Magic. Gotcha. Okay. <coughs> oh. oh. Okay. I thought something was about to happen. All right. So let's go ahead and save. Um, I'm going to put Fee back in. So let's put you. Let's put Alyssa. Uh, we'll keep Elliot. It's fine. So, like that, I guess. Uh, maybe like that. Okay. So, let's go ahead. I'm going to head. Blah, blah. Actually, hold on one second before we save. Come on. So. Okay, yeah. I knew something was up earlier with this. So, let me fix. Actually, actually, that's not a bad formation. Huh. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, note. So, quest. <coughs> so. I'm gonna obviously we're gonna do the crying over milk mission first. Um is there anything else? I think ornaments are fine, right? Nothing got taken away, I think. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and split the part here. So let's save. <clears throat> there we go. Simple as that. Alright, so. Hang on tight, guys. We will be right back. 